Hi, I'm Ornito. It's me. Uh, I am the person who designs and makes modular for the masses modules. Uh, and today I'm going to demonstrate and show my double plus base, my plus snare, my 909 CRC, my 909 hat, and my ZVHP. First, we have the First, we have the double plus bass. This is an 11 knob, 909-ish style kick drum, which has a lot of options. You can control the pitch of your kick. The pitch can also be controlled with a CV. You can control the waveform of the pitch from triangle to square. You can control the length of the envelope, the length of the decay. You can control the height of the initial uh, pitch uh, envelope, the height of the pitch envelope, the sort of decay of the pitch envelope. A 909 envelope is what I usually use. It also has an 808 kind of envelope, which also raises the pitch by quite a bit. I couldn't sort of eliminate that problem. Um, it has an impact sound, which is either a spike or a very long, a kind of a thump. Um, and then you can control the volume of that impact sound. This uh, the CV control that controls the pitch can be attenuated with this knob. This knob controls the envelope height right there, which I will explain when I get to that. And of course you have a volume sound. The CV in controls the pitch. The envelope out is represented by how bright those LEDs are. Let's listen to it. Very low. Very high. Short. Tip. Envelope height. Thump, spike, loud, quiet, that's the 808 style envelope, yeah. I'm not in love with it. It makes the pitch of the whole module go really high. It would be better if I had used the capacitor in the build to make the overall pitch of the module be lower. But it is what it is. This LED represents the envelope coming out of the envelope out jack right there. It's usually sitting at about 10 volts. About 10 volts is what happens when that pitch, when those LEDs are off. We can't even hear it. Listen to how low it can go. But if I, oh my gosh, that is so cool. <sighs> if I use this, if I'm triggering this like I was a second ago, all right, see how that, that, that when that light hits, it's gonna be shooting the control voltage down closer to zero volts and be affecting this uh, voltage controlled oscillator.
plugged it in the wrong spot. I hope that has helped you make sense of that module. Okay, now we're moving on to the plus snare. There it is. Okay, this is a basic 808 snare drum. It has the tone feature and the snappy feature of the 808. It goes from low tone to high tone, high snappy, to almost non-existent snappy. You can plug in another, let's use my uh, voltage controlled oscillator, my ZVHP as an alternative noise source. So you can plug anything in there and it'll take place of the snappy from the noise generator. All right, what makes it a plus snare and not just a normal snare is that it has a decay module or a decay circuit built in. The decay circuit comes before the rest of the circuit, so or the decay wet and dry uh, knob comes before the rest of the circuit. So you can hit one hit, turn it down, so there you go. You can control this with a control voltage, this knob, to automatically inject the snare sound into the delay circuit or whenever you want. Send it a gate to it automatically, whatever, and it works. Okay, moving on. Okay, it can go really low. I mean, we've all we've all heard crunchy PT2399 delays before, and that's basically what this can do, just like they all can, if they're designed properly, in my opinion. So anyway, have fun. Moving on to the Okay, moving on to the 909 CRC. The CRC stands for crash ride cowbell. It is voltage controlled. Okay, I wasn't supposed to get lost in a little jam there, but I did. So uh, I will explain again that the 909 CRC is a voltage controlled sample player. It does the samples exactly like the original 909 does, but instead of using the EEPROM device that the 909 uses, it uses a microcontroller with three samples built in, the ride sample, the crash sample, and an 808 cowbell sample, as silly as that is. You will hear that the, it doesn't sound identical to an 808 uh, cowbell because the 808 cowbell is a synthesized sound. It's not a sampled sound. Uh, so one of the, okay, here's another cool thing. The pitch of the crash ride cowbell module is adjustable. It can go very high indeed, uselessly high. 
it can go super low. And here is the coolest part. It can go in reverse. So there we have it. It's fun. You can you can scrub back and forth in the sample if you trigger it once. Oh, I lost the trigger. So anyway, that's a lot of fun. Moving on to the 909 cow, 909 hat. Is it being triggered? It is being triggered. The pitch of the 909 hat can be changed to be very high, uselessly high, very low. and reverse. The decay can be short. The decay can be long. It also does closed hat. All of these, uh, all of these 909 based modules have accents built in. Oh, even the uh, snare has an accent built in. I don't know if I've ever tried the snare accent, but they do have accents built in. You can plug an accent sound in. This is going to be quiet. Yeah, we can't even really hear it. But if we plug it into an, this envelope, like I was talking about before, it blows it out like crazy. Oh, okay. It's not doing it. Yeah, there it went. So anyway, this is 5 volt preferred uh, control voltage. It can handle more control voltage than 5 volts, but it'll, it'll blow out the VCA. Not, it won't damage it, it'll just blow it out in the sense of making it everything really loud. All right. Oh. Now we're moving on to one of my favorite modules I've ever designed, and one of the first circuits I ever designed. This is the ZVHP. ZV standing for, of course, my friend uh, Constantine, whose artist name is Zvuko Processor, starting with ZV. Oh my gosh. Sorry about that. My resonance is too high. All right. Um, I am removing the CV. I'm putting it in the in slot. There we go. All right. This is a high pass filter, which is a high pass resonant filter. That's the one I was using as a voltage controlled oscillator earlier. Uh, but I'm using it as a filter right now. Now, when you're just using it, I here have a fairly generic standard. There we go. Fairly standard kick drum sound. Maybe a little long. There you go. Maybe that attack's a little loud. Okay, there we go. And imagining, I'm turn it up a little bit. It's turn it up as loud as it'll go. All right. Imagining we're in the middle of a set and we want to do the breakdown. Turn that. Take out some of that bass. Take out all that bass. Bring it back in. I love this knob. 
It's my favorite knob. It is control. It is voltage controlled, so you can break that out to some big performance knob that you have somewhere in your system, or you can automate it if you want. I like having it on a big external knob. That way, I can bring the base in, take the base out, and reach for it instantly without having to fiddle with this tiny little knob here in the middle of my wires and stuff. Now, here is the great part. I turn this resonance up. All right, and then you can hear that slight amount, well, that little bit of ringing. So much of that bass is coming from the filter. When the filter hits, when the resonant peak of the filter moves down, into the lowest parts of the register and that kick drum hits that same frequency or close to it, it'll make that filter ring. I'm going to turn down the resonance. Still a perfectly serviceable kick drum, but bring that resonance up. It just sounds great. Now um, you can you can mess with the pitch dynamics of some kick drums. Like if you turn the resonant peak, I mean, if you turn the filter, tune the filter cutoff frequency to a little bit higher and then turn the resonance up, you can have a raising. Come on. You can have it be dropping a little bit. You can just um, if you have a kick drum that's not super adjustable, like the double plus bass, you can tune your kicks to the room. So you can listen for the resonant frequency of your, of wherever you're doing your gig. And you can tune this resonance knob, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the cutoff knob to fill the room with, to, to match the resonant frequencies, uh, characteristics of the space you're playing in. Maybe you're playing in a bathroom. Uh, so anyway, that is the, uh, the, the, the drum modules that I have uh, to available. I mean, the filter module isn't a drum module, but that's how I use it all the time. Okay, so thanks for watching please send me an email. Okay. Or a chat or whatever. Okay. Bye. Stop recording.